The tables have turned. Those who once schemed, plotted, and tried to tear you down are now living in fear. They thought their actions would go unnoticed, but little did they know, karma has no expiration date. You may not see it yet, but the energy they sent your way is coming back harder and faster than they ever expected. So, what happens when the ones who tried to break you are now breaking themselves? Stay tuned, because the story isn't over it's just beginning. Right off the bat, I'm getting the message that there are quite a few people who are currently living in fear because of the things they said or did to you. Initially, these individuals might have thought they got away with it, and even if their plans didn't succeed, it may have seemed like there were no consequences for trying. But what I'm sensing is that a lot of negative karma is catching up to them. As always, if you're new here, welcome. You all are my light workers, my healers, and because of your bright energy, you often attract narcissistic, low vibration, unhealed types of people. These individuals are drawn to your light, but while they admire it, some also think they can take advantage of your kindness. As I shuffle the deck, the energy crackles with intensity, signaling that a powerful message is about to unfold. There's a story here, one that carries weight and urgency, something that has been buried in the shadows but now demands to be revealed. One by one, the cards fall, laying bare a narrative of karmic justice. The truth, once obscured, now shines through with clarity. These cards speak of a reversal in fortune for those who once sought to harm you. The same hands that schemed against you are now trembling in fear. Their intentions, once hidden behind masks of deceit and malice, have been exposed to the light. The universe has turned its gaze on them, and they are forced to face the consequences of their actions. The cards show that their confidence has crumbled, replaced by anxiety and dread. What they sent out has come back to them, magnified. Every attempt to bring you down, every whisper of ill intent, is now a weight they carry. They are living in fear, haunted by the very shadows they once tried to cast over you. The energy in these cards reveals a profound truth. No harm goes unnoticed, and justice, though sometimes delayed, is inevitable. The first card, the tower, appears, but it's reversed. This card represents those who thought they could shake your foundation. They tried to create chaos, hoping to see your downfall. Yet, the reversal shows that their plans didn't manifest as they had hoped. Instead, the chaos they sent your way has backfired. They thought you would crumble under pressure, but you stood firm. Now, they are the ones watching their world fall apart. The very destruction they wished upon you has come to them, unexpected, swift, and terrifying. They are living in fear of the consequences of their own actions, seeing the cracks in their own lives widening with every passing day. Next, the Seven of Swords reveals itself. This is the card of deception, betrayal, and sneakiness. The people who wronged you thought they could get away with it. They moved in the shadows, whispered behind closed doors, and plotted in secret. They believed their actions were hidden, that they were untouchable. But the Seven of Swords reminds us that all secrets come to light. The truth has surfaced, and now they realize that they can't run from the consequences. They thought they could harm you without being caught, but now, the weight of their betrayal is heavy on their hearts, haunting them. Here comes the devil, and it's upright. This card speaks of the chains they have willingly bound themselves to, their own toxic patterns, their own malicious intentions. The devil shows us that these people are now trapped by their own vices, addictions, and fears. They thought they were powerful when they sought to hurt you, but now they're enslaved by the darkness they once wielded. Every attempt to harm you has only tightened the chains around them, and now they live in fear of what is to come. They are prisoners of their own making, unable to escape the torment they once wished upon you. As the Nine of Swords falls, the message is undeniable, they are suffering in silence. This card is the embodiment of anxiety, sleepless nights, and mental torment. Those who once tried to harm you are now lying awake, haunted by their own guilt, their own fear. Every night, they relive their actions, wondering when the retribution will come. The same dread they wanted you to feel now consumes them. Their minds are filled with nightmares, regrets, and the inescapable feeling that karma is closing in on them. They live in constant fear of the consequences they know are coming. 
and justice appears, upright and unwavering. This card is the universe's answer. Justice is blind, but it is fair. Those who wronged you are now reaping what they have sown. They are living in fear because they know that balance must be restored. Justice serves to remind us that no action goes unnoticed, and no harm goes unpunished. For every wound they try to inflict on you, they now bear the scars themselves. The scales are tipping in your favor, and they are painfully aware of it. They cannot escape the justice that is coming for them, and it fills their hearts with dread. These cards tell is one of karmic balance. Those who sought to harm you, who acted in malice, are now trapped in their own web of fear and despair. The universe has seen their actions, and now the consequences are unavoidable. They are living in constant fear, knowing that the energy they put out into the world has come back to haunt them. Remember, you are protected, and justice is on your side. The storm they tried to bring into your life is now raging in theirs. Stay strong, stay grounded, and trust that the universe is taking care of everything. Karma doesn't forget, and neither do the cards. What they don't realize is that you are divinely protected. Many of you, despite your gentle nature, are incredibly strong and have learned how to set boundaries and protect yourselves. A lot of you are also skilled spiritual workers, and your prayers are powerful. You know how to protect your energy and even reverse negative energy sent your way. Whether or not you actively wish for harm to come to anyone, your spiritual protection is strong. If God, your angels, your spiritual team, or your ancestors feel justice is necessary, they will step in, and that's exactly what's happening now. I'm picking up that someone really crossed a line with you, and your spiritual team is not happy about it. There's a sense of someone, be it an ancestor, God, or your angels, being particularly upset and ready to deliver justice. The person who wronged you is now feeling that backlash and living in fear. For many of you, this might be someone who attempted to do some sort of spiritual work against you, but now they're scared and filled with regret. I'm even getting the image of them being restless and anxious, especially at night, as they're fully aware that their actions are catching up with them. This energy is real, and the consequences of their choices are coming to light. The dark energy that certain individuals tried to send your way is now turning back on them. If you resonate with the idea that someone has been attempting spiritual work against you, this message is for you. People often think they're powerful when they dabble with low vibrational energies, but those forces have no real loyalty. If they're not getting what they want from their target, they will turn on the very person who sent them. Darkness feeds off chaos, and when it doesn't get that from its intended source, it goes back to the sender. I'm also hearing that some of these people are using magic or energy work outside of their understanding or culture, and they're doing it improperly. This is especially true for those who may have gone to a spiritual worker, and now both the person and the spiritual worker are frightened because something went wrong. What's happening is beyond your awareness, but God, your angels, and your spiritual team are ensuring that these individuals are haunted by nightmares, knowing full well why they're in the situation they're in. It's not just for your sake, but to stop them from hurting others as well. You may not be the only person they've tried to harm, but you are the one making the biggest impact. There may be people you hardly know who seem to hold a grudge against you, but it's your light that stirs something in them. With your big purpose in life, you've likely encountered distractions or obstacles that have tried to pull you off your path, but none of them will succeed. You might feel, at times, like you're under heavy attack and question your protection, but remember that these challenges only make you stronger. Just like a muscle, your spiritual protection and prayer life grow stronger with practice. Even when you feel lost or overwhelmed by darkness, know that you've never given into it. You're simply protecting yourself from it. Those who work with dark energies are not in a healthy place, and honestly, it's illogical to turn to something destructive. It takes real courage and strength to surrender to God and choose the higher path which is exactly what you've been doing. Many of you only see the higher road, and though it can be frustrating, especially when you're tired of always taking it, remember that your form of rebellion is in standing up for yourself and setting boundaries. Saying no and protecting your energy is your version of a villain era, and that's incredibly powerful. You're a true force when you defend yourself.
While some of you may have taken steps to stand up for yourselves or implement your own form of justice, nothing compares to the energy and effort those people wasted trying to bring you down. In the end, they only exhausted themselves, while you continue to rise above. Every single ounce of energy that was used to try and bring you down is now coming back on those individuals. What's even more surprising is that they could have used that energy to work on themselves and grow, but instead, they chose a destructive path. It's wild to think about how much time and effort you may have spent defending yourself, often against people you barely knew or once considered close friends. It's almost laughable to call them friends, because, with friends like that, who needs enemies? Many people are drawn to you because of your light, but at the same time, that very light makes them envious. It's a strange dynamic, you attract them, and yet they resent you for the qualities that drew them in. This is why it's so important to be mindful of who you allow in your circle. Your journey will often require you to let people go, and at times, they'll naturally fall away from your life. Some will try to come back, while others will disappear, almost as if they're on a different timeline altogether. It's like you cross paths with certain people, and then suddenly, they're gone, and you know that chapter is closed. If you've ever wondered how people who wronged you could just go on with their lives, rest assured, they haven't escaped the consequences. They weren't in a good place to begin with, and they're definitely not in a better place now. Some of these people, especially those who were jealous of your work or spiritual gifts, may have had some temporary success, but that has now been stripped away. I'm hearing that their spiritual energy or gifts have been taken from them. For some, their gifts didn't even come from within, they were relying on dark forces, and now that those energies have turned on them, they've lost their power. Spiritual gifts come from a higher source, God, your ancestors, or your divine blessings. But when someone tries to work with dark energies, their strength is borrowed, not true power. When those dark energies leave them or encounter the strong protection you have, their spark fades. There's no doubt that certain energies can still affect you at times, but when you become aware of them, you act. Whether you rest, cleanse, pray, or cut cords, you find a way to level up and move forward. Meanwhile, those who tried to send harm your way spiral into obsession, confused by the backlash they're facing. Ironically, they think they're being attacked spiritually, but in reality, they're just feeling the effects of the energy they send out, now turning back on them. Some of you may have done reversal prayers or protection work, and there's nothing wrong with that. To me, praying for God to transmute the energy or send it back if necessary is perfectly valid. When so much negative energy is thrown at us, we don't always have the capacity to transmute it all ourselves. So when people say it's wrong to send energy back, that doesn't make sense to me. I always feel that it's best to give it to God and let Him, along with your angels, decide what to do with it. Meanwhile, you focus on what you can control, your spiritual practices, cleansing, grounding, and protecting your energy. People may say what they want about you, but what they can't deny is the incredible amount of energy you've invested into your own growth, prayer, and protection. There are moments when we wish we didn't have to constantly deal with these intense energies, but the truth is, many of us are on the verge of a breakthrough. You may even notice that some of the issues you've dealt with in the past no longer affect you in the same way. You've moved forward, perhaps even forgotten about some of these individuals, because in your mind, you've defeated another villain and moved on. The people who wronged you are now realizing they underestimated your strength. Whether it was a subtle action like blocking them or shifting your focus, they see now that you're not to be messed with. You didn't need to seek revenge because divine justice is at work, and karma is catching up to them for all the harm they've caused. Meanwhile, you've stayed ambitious, continuously improving, connecting with God, and moving forward. Though people may have overlooked the effort you put in behind the scenes, they can no longer ignore the light you're now shining. What they don't see is the struggle and challenges you face to get where you are. They only see the success, and it shakes them when they realize the amount of power you possess. For a long time, People have tried to dim your light, gaslight you into doubting your abilities, or even take your power away. But now, you're standing in your full strength, and some may even be shocked by just how powerful you are. You might have only been operating at a fraction of your true potential to keep the peace or to avoid causing conflict, but when necessary, 
you unleash that power to protect yourself and those around you. In a sense, the challenges these people presented only triggered your transformation, making you stronger and wiser. You may have Virgo or Libra energy, which signifies that you try to balance and be fair, but when people keep pushing you off balance, you match their energy and throw it right back at them. Every time someone tried to bring you down, it ultimately led to your growth, whether it was more success, a better version of yourself, or even improved finances. Even when people tried to mask criticism as advice to hurt you, you used it as an opportunity to grow. You become smarter, more discerning, and you now know exactly who your true opponents are. In the end, you've mastered the art of choosing your battles wisely, knowing when to walk away and when to take a stand. You've learned to protect your energy, cleanse, pray, and cut cords. And while you may walk away from many battles, that doesn't mean your spiritual team or divine protection does. They've always had your back. There's confidence in knowing that God is handling things, but also knowing that if you need to take action, you'll do it without hesitation. Now, people fear both your spiritual strength and your ability to stand up for yourself because they've pushed you too far. You've pulled back, gone silent, and in doing so, you've taken away their ability to drain your energy. You are no longer their source of power, and that scares them more than anything. Imagine if you were assured that whatever you did for God's glory would succeed, what would you undertake? Once you identify what that might be, the crucial question then becomes, why aren't you already pursuing it? Fear is often the greatest obstacle, and the Bible frequently reminds us to fear not. Fear can prevent us from following God's calling. To truly grow, we must confront our fears. So, do you value personal growth enough to face your fears, or are you letting your fear of failure keep you from moving forward, even if it means remaining stagnant? Growth inherently involves risk, and risk brings fear. The choice is clear, confront your fear or avoid it and remain passive and stagnant. Often, we seek reassurance and a guarantee that everything will be alright before taking a leap, but God rarely provides that guarantee up front. True growth occurs when we are willing to take a step of faith without certainty. It's about trusting God and moving forward despite the uncertainty. To grow, you must push beyond your comfort zone. The fears you avoid become your boundaries. Think of fear as an invitation to evolve, to expand beyond your current limitations. It's a call to explore new possibilities and to grow in ways you haven't yet experienced. The Holy Spirit is most active when you step outside your familiar zone. You need to confront your fears now, rather than postponing them with promises of, someday, that never seem to materialize. Anything you're hesitant about or reluctant to do often gets deferred indefinitely, but it's essential to act today. God is telling us, you won't live forever. This means that real growth happens at the edge of your comfort zone. I firmly believe that growth always begins where your comfort ends. There's no convincing me otherwise. Every Sunday, I still feel uneasy standing up here, but I push through because growth and faith often lie beyond our comfort zones. Many people, driven by fear, busily stick to what's comfortable to avoid stepping out in faith. So, what would you undertake for God's glory if you knew it would succeed? The only way to find out is to take the leap. When you sense God calling you to something, the only way to confirm it is to act. Naturally, it must align with his word and it helps to seek counsel from fellow believers if you have doubts. But if you find yourself asking, what if it doesn't work, consider this, what if it does? When I was a teenager at camp, I remember standing at the back of the worship service when Coach Bully told me, boy, when the singing is over, I want you to preach. I was stunned. Preach? In 45 seconds? I asked. Yep. He replied. I told him, Coach, I've only been a Christian for a couple of years and I'm not comfortable speaking in front of people. He retorted, Comfortable? Did you think Daniel was comfortable in the lion's den? Or Paul and Silas in prison? Or Jesus on the cross? What should I talk about? I asked. Coach Lee simply said, Talk about Jesus. Talk about John 3 verse 16. Go. So, I did. I preached a sermon on John 3 verse 16, and a lot of kids came to faith. 
As I left the platform, Coach Lee pointed at me and said, When you teach the Bible, I see two things. You come alive, and they come alive. Then I had to sit down with my dad, who wasn't a believer at the time, and tell him I wasn't going to medical school, I was going to seminary. He asked, What seminary? I explained, It's preacher school. His response was, Preacher school? You only work half a day a week and study one book. Why do you need a whole school for that? I shrugged and said, I don't know. They make you go. And I went ahead and did it. If you place your trust not in your circumstances, because honestly, who knows how things will turn out, but in him, that's what truly matters. We can't predict the future, right now, we only see things dimly. So how do you figure out what he wants you to do? My approach to understanding God's call is simple, pray, make your best guess, and take action. Pray, guess, and go. When making that guess, it's crucial to stay grounded in God's word and surrounded by his people. Follow what he tells you. In John chapter 3, Jesus compares following God's will to the wind. You can't see the wind itself, only its effects. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. You can feel it and observe how it changes things, but you never actually see the wind. It's only when you set sail and let the wind guide you that you experience its power and direction. If you could accomplish anything for the glory of God with the certainty of success, what would it be? Once you have an idea, don't just listen to the word but put it into action. It's time to move beyond merely hearing and start doing. I frequently remind people, especially the younger generation, which growth doesn't happen in comfort, it happens when we're stretched and challenged. Today, I believe this message is for me as well, God is pushing us out of our comfort zones. Scientists and psychologists agree that remaining in comfort zones stifles growth in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. For example, when an eaglet is developing, the parent eagle removes feathers from the nest to make the eaglet uncomfortable, encouraging it to spread its wings and learn to fly. Similarly, God uses discomfort in our lives to teach us to soar. Growth starts at the edge of your comfort zone. You need to let go of your comfort and be willing to step into the unknown. Success often comes from venturing into discomfort, so embrace the challenge of being uncomfortable. God's call isn't about staying in the familiar, it's about taking bold steps of faith. While he doesn't promise comfort, he does promise the strength to be courageous. Today, I'm here to urge you to step out of your comfort zone, the boat of comfort. God is calling you to move beyond your familiar boundaries. He wants to stretch you, help you grow, and push you to achieve more than you think possible. For some of you, God has given you a vision or dream, perhaps years or even decades ago, but you're still clinging to the safety of the boat because it's comfortable. Remember, God doesn't call you without also equipping you with the courage to act. It's time to leave the boat behind and pursue that dream. Just like Peter stepped out of the boat and began walking on water, you too need to take that first step. Some of you might be waiting for God to part the sea before you make your move, but God is saying, step out, and I will part the sea. Faith involves setting bold goals and trusting in a limitless God. It's about committing fully and believing that God is working behind the scenes to make things happen. We're not here to play it safe, we're here to take risks. I've always been drawn to adventures, and I encourage you to ask God for a bold vision, a dream of how you can align your life with his plan to make a significant impact in the world for his glory. Then, go after that dream with everything you've got and witness the results. It's easy to settle into a comfortable life with things that fall short of God's best for us. We know there's more potential within us, but we often hesitate to stretch ourselves or take risks. We worry about what might go wrong. What if the door doesn't open or the plan fails? We can become complacent with negative influences, unhealthy habits, or feelings of self-pity, always focusing on what we've missed or how we're disadvantaged. The danger of staying in our comfort zone is that we miss out on our true destiny. When God is calling you to a higher purpose, there will be a choice to make, comfort or calling. Will you stay where you are, avoiding challenges, discipline, and fear, or will you step out in faith? take a risk, and embrace the call. The decision is yours. 
If you're never stepping out of your comfort zone, you're not truly growing. Growth requires stretching your faith and pushing beyond your limits. The enemy will always try to convince you of what you can't do, but if you ignore those lies, you'll hear a quiet, encouraging voice that tells you what you can achieve. You might wonder, what if I try and fail? But consider this, what if you try and succeed? What if taking that step of faith elevates you to a new level and reveals abilities you never knew you had? What if you discover you can do things you've never done before, walk in freedom, lead with confidence, live a fulfilled life? Don't let the what-ifs discourage you from pursuing your destiny. Instead, flip them around. What if God's favor is upon you? What if unexpected opportunities arise? What if you overcome long-standing challenges? The key is to try because if you don't, you'll never know what's possible. Playing it safe offers no rewards. As Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Many of you have the potential to be used in incredible ways, but you hesitate to take the risk. Here's a practical challenge from this parable. Without taking risks for God, there are no rewards from Him. The best things in life come when you step out in faith and embrace the risk of trusting Him. God's greatest works in your life often happen in those moments when you say, I'm terrified to trust you with this, but I'm choosing to step out in faith anyway. If you're never willing to take risks, you won't accomplish much in this world. So rise up, take that risk, make that leap, and take action today. Don't let another day pass without moving forward. We aren't here just to read about others living adventurous lives, we're called to live them ourselves. Think about the irony of our lives, we become content with routines, binge watch TV shows about other people's lives, or play video games about adventures while staying stuck in our own safe zones. We scroll through social media, looking at others' lives instead of living our own. We're meant for adventure, but to embrace the adventure God has for us, we need to shift from routine to risk. Routine can easily become a rut, a series of actions done day in and day out without questioning their purpose or impact. As you approach the end of your life, Consider whether you've truly lived the life you were meant to, made the difference you were called to make, and fulfilled your true purpose. We often find ourselves stuck in ruts. When we stay in a routine long enough, it creates a rut, and if we remain in that rut too long, it can become a grave. Many people spend their lives trapped in this mundane cycle, simply existing rather than truly living. But Jesus tells us in John 10 verse 10 that he came to give us life in abundance, not a monotonous, predictable existence. So many of us are conditioned to stay safe, to avoid excitement, and to believe that we should not expect too much. This mindset often seeps into our faith, leading us to think, don't expect too much from God. Just stay safe and stick to the status quo. But living in fear and clinging to the safety of our controlled little world prevents us from stepping into the purpose God has for our lives. Faith requires risk. It means doing things we cannot accomplish on our own, things that require God's intervention. The enemy knows that if he can't take our souls, he can at least make us live safe, keeping us from stepping out in faith and fulfilling God's call on our lives. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. If we want to please God, we need to embrace a life of risk and faith. To move forward, we must step out of our comfort zones and stop being content with just reading about other people's adventures. There's a story God wants you to live. What should truly scare us is not taking risks but the regret of reaching the end of our lives and realizing we never stepped out to do what God called us to do. The fear of missing out on our divine purpose and living a life of regret should be our greatest concern. Imagine embarking on a journey through an unknown landscape where each step forward is an act of faith and each breath a whisper of hope. This journey is not marked by the visible challenges of towering peaks or vast oceans, but by the internal battles that we face. It is marked by the moments of doubt, fear, and uncertainty that cloud our path. Yet, it is in these very moments that a profound truth emerges, a beacon of hope in the darkness. God is for us. He is the compass that guides us, the light that illuminates our path, and the strength that carries us forward. Today, we will delve into understanding how to find strength in the Lord and be assured that He will never fail us.
I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. In Isaiah 41 verse 10, we find a promise that anchors us. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This verse is not just a comforting thought. It is the very essence of God's promise to us, an assurance that no matter the journey, we are never alone. Together, we will discover the means to navigate life's uncertainties, fortified by the knowledge that God's presence is ever with us. Now, as we journey through life, we often encounter terrains that test our faith and resolve. These moments filled with uncertainty can make us feel as though we are journeying through a thick fog, each step uncertain, each decision filled with the potential for misstep or the risk of error. Yet, it is precisely in these moments of vulnerability that God's promise to be with us, to guide and strengthen us, becomes most tangible. Life's journey is unpredictable. We face challenges that seem insurmountable, problems that appear unsolvable, and questions that seem unanswerable. It is in these times when the fog of uncertainty surrounds us that the weight of our own weakness becomes most apparent. However, it is also in these times that the strength of God's presence shines brightest. The story of David and Goliath is told in 1 Samuel 17 verse 45 serves as a powerful reminder of this truth. Facing a giant, David declared, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David's confidence did not stem from his own capabilities, but from his faith in God's power. Like David, we are called to face the giants in our lives not with fear, but with the assurance that God is with us, providing the strength we need to overcome. This journey through life, with its highs and lows, is not a journey taken alone, but a shared journey with God as our constant companion. His promise to be with us is not just a reassurance of presence, but an assurance of active support. In moments of weakness, He provides strength. In times of doubt, He offers faith. And in periods of turmoil, he grants peace. Philippians 4 verse 13 captures this beautifully. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This verse is a testament to the transformative power of God's strength in our lives, a reminder that regardless of the challenges we face, we possess the capability to overcome them, not through our own might, but through the strength granted to us by Christ. As we navigate the uncertainties of life, let us remember that we do not walk alone. The fog of doubt and fear may at times cloud our path, but the light of God's presence is a constant guide, His word the compass that directs us, and His strength the foundation upon which we can build our resilience. In embracing this journey, let us draw near to God, seeking His guidance and strength in every step. Let us trust in His promise to be with us, to strengthen us, and to uphold us, and as we do so, let us find comfort in the knowledge that no matter the challenges we encounter, we are journeying with the Almighty God who never fails us. Let us now explore the practical implications of God's favor and guidance and how His presence empowers us to face life's adversities with strength and confidence. As we journey through life, it often feels as though we are navigating a vast, uncharted wilderness. The terrain is rough, the paths are unmarked, and the destination seems distant. It's in these moments of uncertainty and struggle that the presence of a guide can make all the difference, a guide who not only knows the way, but also walks with us, offering support, encouragement, and direction. This guide is God, and His promise to be with us is a testament to His unfailing support. Consider the words of Romans 8 verse 31, which boldly declares, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? This verse is not just a rhetorical question. It's a declaration of divine support. It reassures us that with God on our side, the challenges and adversaries that we face lose their power over us. The realization that the creator of the heavens and the earth is for us should fill our hearts with courage and our steps with confidence. This simple truth changes everything. It means that no matter what we face, we are not overwhelmed because our God is bigger than our struggles. 
Knowing this, we can face anything, understanding that with God, we're always in a position of strength. This reassurance helps us stand firm no matter what comes our way, confident that we are never alone or without help. Now, this assurance of God being for us is not meant to suggest that our journey will be without challenge. Rather, it is a reminder that when we encounter obstacles, we do not face them alone. The battles we fight are fought with God's strength, and the victories we claim are won through His might. Just as a seasoned guide leads a traveler through treacherous terrain, God guides us, offering His wisdom and strength to navigate the complexities of life. The practical application of this truth is seen in our daily lives. When we face decisions that leave us perplexed, God's wisdom is available to guide us. When we encounter situations that threaten to overwhelm us, His strength is sufficient to sustain us. And when we feel isolated or abandoned, His presence is a constant companion, offering comfort and reassurance. But how do we tap into this divine support? The key lies in our relationship with God. Just as communication is vital between a traveler and their guide, so too is our communication with God. Prayer becomes the medium through which we express our fears, our hopes, and our needs. And it is through the study of His Word and the leading of the Holy Spirit that we gain insight into His character, His promises, and His will for our lives. Furthermore, the journey of faith is one that requires trust. Trust in God's timing, trust in His promises, and trust in His character. It is a trust that is built over time through experiences that testify to God's faithfulness and goodness. Each challenge overcome and each need met serves as a milestone in our journey of faith, reinforcing our trust in God and His provision. This journey, though personal, is also shared. As believers, we are part of a community of faith, a family of fellow travelers who share the road with us. This community offers support, encouragement, and accountability, reminding us that we are not alone in our journey. It is within this community that we find opportunities to share our stories, to celebrate our victories, and to encourage one another in times of struggle. As we reflect on the assurance that God is for us, let us also consider the response that it calls for from each of us, a response of faith, of trust, and of obedience. The faith that God is who He says He is, the trust that He will do what He has promised, and the obedience to His guidance and commandments. It is through this response that we experience the fullness of God's support and guidance in our lives. Therefore, let us carry with us the assurance that God is indeed for us. Let this truth anchor us in times of uncertainty, strengthen us in times of weakness, and guide us in times of decision. For with God on our side, we have nothing to fear. We really don't. Remember, the devil is a liar. Let us move forward in faith, confident in the knowledge that no matter what we face, we do not face it alone. God is with us, He is for us, and through Him, we are more than conquerors. We will now turn our attention to the transformative power of embracing God's strength in our lives. Throughout the course of our daily lives, we encounter various forms of adversity, moments that test our faith, challenge our resolve, and sometimes threaten to overwhelm us. It's in these moments that the true depth of our reliance on God is revealed. The realization that our strength alone is insufficient is not a cause for despair, but an invitation to lean fully into the strength that God provides. This reliance on divine strength is not a sign of weakness, but a testament to our understanding of where our true power lies. The Apostle Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10 serve as a profound reminder of this truth. He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This seemingly contradictory statement highlights the core of Christian strength. We do not take pride in our own power, but in God's. Our weaknesses and obstacles turn into opportunities for God's strength and grace to shine through in our lives. Embracing God's strength requires a shift in perspective. It means viewing our challenges through the lens of faith, recognizing that with God, no obstacle is insurmountable. 
This shift doesn't negate the reality of our struggles, but places them in the context of God's greater power and purpose. Again, it's an acknowledgement that our journey through life is not undertaken alone, but in collaboration with the divine, where our efforts are enhanced and completed by God's power. This divine partnership empowers us to approach life's battles with a different mindset. Instead of being overwhelmed by the magnitude of our challenges, we are encouraged by the knowledge that God is with us, fighting for us, and through Him, we have victory. And remember, this doesn't mean we won't face difficulties or that our faith won't be tested. What it does mean is that in the midst of our battles, we have a source of strength that is inexhaustible, a well of courage that never runs dry, and a promise of victory that is certain. Living in the strength that God provides also has a profound impact on how we relate to others. It compels us to move beyond our limitations and to act with compassion, courage, and conviction. As we experience God's strength in our lives, we are motivated to be agents of His love and grace in the world around us. Our battles, once seen as personal struggles, become opportunities to testify to God's power and to offer hope to others facing similar challenges. My friends, let us also consider that our God is unchanging and unfailing in nature. His steadfast love and faithfulness are our constant companions through every season. To truly grasp that He is for us, we must also understand that He will never fail us. And in so doing, we must understand His character. God is not like humans who might make promises only to break them when circumstances change. God's promises are as unshakable as His very nature. When he commits to being by our side, he means it for eternity. This assurance enables us to be confident that he is for us and face the uncertainties and challenges of life with a calm heart and a steady spirit, knowing that regardless of what we encounter, God's support remains unwavering. Living with the knowledge that God will never fail us transforms the way we approach every aspect of our existence. It allows us to take bold steps of faith, to dream big, and to pursue our God-given destinies without fear of abandonment. When we stumble or fall, as we inevitably will, this promise offers us the strength to rise again, dust ourselves off, and continue the journey. It's a reminder that our failures do not define us in the eyes of God. Rather, His unfailing presence is a testament to our inherent worth and potential in Him. Therefore, let us carry forward the assurance that no matter the trials we face or the mountains we must climb, God's presence and support are guaranteed. God is for us. He is with us every step of the way. His promise is as reliable as the dawn. In every moment of doubt, every season of struggle, and every celebration of victory, may we remember this. Our God will never fail us. My friends, let's carry with us the empowering truth that resonates at the heart of our message. God is for you. So be strong in the Lord. He will never fail you. In every step of your journey through the highs and the lows, remember that you are never walking alone. The Lord stands beside you as a steadfast guide, offering His strength, His love, and His unwavering support. Let this knowledge fill you with courage and hope. When you face the mountains of life, look to Him, draw from His infinite strength, and move forward with confidence. For in the Lord, you have an unshakable support, and with Him, you will navigate the challenges of life not just with endurance, but with victory. Be strong in the Lord, my dear friends, for He will never fail you. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God, Heavenly Father, Almighty God. I come before you with a heart full of thanksgiving and praise. I acknowledge your greatness, your majesty, and your sovereignty over all creation. You are the Rock of Ages, the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Your power is unmatched, your wisdom and love are boundless. I worship you, Lord, for who you are, my fortress, my deliverer, and my strength. Lord. I give you thanks for the gift of life and for the countless blessings you have poured into my life and the lives of my loved ones. I am grateful for your mercies that are new every morning and for your grace that sustains me. Thank you for your unwavering presence and for walking beside me through every trial and triumph. Lord, 
I ask for your forgiveness for my sins, for the times I have fallen short of your glory. I also choose to forgive those who have wronged me, releasing any bitterness or resentment in my heart. Cleanse me, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Father, I stand on your promises, drawing strength from your word. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke the spirit of fear, doubt, and discouragement, binding them in the name of Jesus, and I claim faith, hope, and love in my life. Lord, empower me to be strong in you and in the power of your might. Fill me with the wisdom, courage, and strength to face life's battles, knowing that with you, victory is assured. I decree healing over my body, mind, and spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray for your healing touch upon my loved ones. Mighty God, I stand against every attack of the enemy, praying against sickness, depression, financial lack, and strife. I claim protection over myself and my loved ones, asking you to shield us from all harm and to guide our steps. Bless us, Father, with your favor and peace, and may your healing hand touch every area of our lives that needs restoration. Lord, as I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement, standing united in faith as we pray for each other. Strengthen us, Lord, to overcome every challenge with grace and to walk in your ways. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, guiding us into all truth and empowering us to live lives that honor you. Bless us, Lord, with your presence. May we experience your profound peace, joy, and love in abundance. Protect us from the snares of the enemy and let your hand be upon us for good. We declare your lordship over our lives, claiming victory over every battle, healing for every wound and sickness, and provision for every need. Let your will be done in our lives and in the lives of my loved ones, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.